everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And today we are we're going to the era that killed the romantic comedy. We are talking about the 2000s. And uh, there were some some good ones that we're going to talk about. But it was a it was a bit of a it's where I think the the term rom-com got sort of its bad reputation because there are a lot of bad ones. Mm-hmm in the 2000s and so maybe we'll also do an episode one of these days of the worst <laughs> it's, a, it's a competitive competitive feel oh boy <laughs> going on there it's just is doing me in here <laughs> and i'm rachel wagner and terry Thier. hello <laughs> uh, yeah what was it like thinking about all these rom-coms from the 2000s it was hard. I'm not going to lie. This was the hardest list to ever do. The <laughs> hardest ranking to do. I sat down listening to like, I was like, Jesus help me. Jesus take the wheel from Carrie Underwood, a whole bunch of other songs to put me through this. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not as bad as later on in like the 2010s. There's still some some good ones popping up here and there. Yeah. But it just gets progressively worse. I mean, you go... Starting from 2007 down, it's like, mm, mm. Yeah. There's, I mean, so like Failure to Launch, one of my least favorite movies of all time. There's some all-timer worst movies in this group. Sure. Yeah. For sure. It's painful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we have our short list uh, that we'll post in the, uh, and I, I just put in the short list just everything so they're not it's not a it's not a short list of like these are good movies but like it's just yeah, yeah movies well, like movies like the wedding date oh my gosh or uh-oh rachel Did you say, oh my gosh on that one uh-oh <laughs> uh oh <Uh-oh. laughs> oh uh oh oh yeah but i was just gonna make this point that sometimes we might think the movie is bad and there are people who like it yeah fair enough yeah that's true yeah, you know so uh, <laughs> each your own but uh oh on the spoiler uh, note dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's fine uh, i right, told you well, i struggled do we dive in <laughs> let's dive in i told you what, i struggled what's your number 12 <laughs> my number 12 is the wedding date <laughs> i think i might like this movie more because my brother loves it so much oh, for really? whatever reason yeah he finds it hysterical and I think, I think that has gave it gave it more charm. That's really. When this funny. movie came out, I really <laughs> loved Deborah Messing too. I was I was a big Deborah Messing fan. I still like her, mm-hmm. but like you know, I really liked her um, at that point, like Will and Grace, and then she had that um, whatever that miniseries was on USA. So uh, you know, so I have fond memories of this. I know it's based mm-hmm. on a book. I never read it. Oh, it is. Yeah, I now I can't remember the name of the book, but it is based on a book. But ba- basically, Deborah Messing, I'm trying to figure out how she could afford this because it starts a movie where she's she works at an airport, I guess customer service up in the front. And I have a friend who does the same job and she could not afford to pay an escort to pretend to be her boyfriend to fly all the way to London. Uh, this this is costing her, it's got to be costing her a mortgage. Um, yeah. Because her sister is marrying her ex-fiance. This movie already has a lot of problems to start with it. <laughs> to start with it. Yeah. Like she's going broke. Of course, she's a complete mess. And Dermot Mulroney, it, he plays the guy, the escort. He's very put together. This is his job. And of course, they fall in love. And there's a lot of shenanigans. And, you know, I love Sarah Parrish. So wonderful that she's in this movie. Great British actress. And there's a lot of really good there's a holland taylor's in this movie and i forgot amy adams is the sister in this one it's Um, funny on the the letterbox the 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 headline uh, says love doesn't come cheap (laughs) and that's accurate oh it is absolutely because you really start thinking breaking down the numbers and there's a part too where where she gets drunk and she has to pull money out of the atm Mm -hmm. so so you know she could pay him to get it on because she's not paying she's just paying him to be a fake boyfriend there's nothing more to this. She's got to pay yeah. an extra. And I'm like, girl, you're you going to lose your apartment. You can't afford to fly back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would probably cost, I mean, I'm just guessing, what, 100 grand? I mean, it's going to be a lot. It's got to be a lot. A lot. 
inflation now it's gonna be so much more money and they have like no chemistry i don't know this one i, I don't know this woman's got a lot of problems but yeah i do <laughs> find it there's some charmingness to it but i like the actors involved <laughs> you know i like that they're yeah. an american british family but there mm-hmm. is problems like why is yeah. the system like we are ex-fiance hooking up that's just what a move what a yeah. crappy move to make <laughs> so there's already tension between the sisters and he's a, and it's not like this guy is like you know that great of a catch but the idea and the premise is silly enough so yeah there you go 12. it doesn't well, get higher than that my number 12 is uh, one I think is pretty underrated. I think it's really funny and very sexy. Uh, I have Prime and number 12. And this uh, movie uh, is about, uh, it stars Uma Thurman and Meryl Streep. And Uma Thurman uh, is uh, the patient of uh, the psychiatrist played by Meryl Streep. And she's kind of like bohemian kind of a free spirit or whatever yeah. uh and but she's kind of in a rut in her life and she meets this younger guy played by brian greenberg who is so dreamy and he always is dreamy but he's dreamy in this yeah. and uh and and it turns out that this guy is meryl streep's son and of course like in reality it would be like a huge ethical violation for her to not tell Uma Thurman that that is her son you know to continue to be her therapist and everything and but it, it mostly is really funny and Meryl Streep is great and and the the awkwardness of her talking yeah. about their relationship oh, yeah. with her yeah. with her son is really funny and it's very sexy I, I don't know I just I really like it and I I feel like it's it's one you never hear talked about it is true. I had, I know that I've seen this movie, but I can't remember much of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it, like I said, I think it's I think it's underrated. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. What do you have at eleven? Well, there's so many J Lo movies to pick uh, in this era, and there are none of them good. Um. But I went with the one that I most enjoyed, which was The Wedding Planner, mm-hmm. with uh, Matthew McConaughey. McCona- hey, hey. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And Judy Greer is also in this movie. Yeah. And basically, you know, she's a wedding planner, she's a famous wedding planner, you know, and she's planning um, Matthew McConaughey's wedding. And you could tell, and she already knows the signs of a marriage that isn't going to work, which is really funny. And look, you know, it's going to be wrong, but they fall in love with she planning the wedding. It's your typical, it's, tip, it's a typical romance story like that, you know, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, we're supposed to believe that Jennifer Lopez has <laughs> has no love in her life no and is trouble. sitting at home playing Scrabble with people. I mean, there come is on. that. Yeah, but yeah, I will it's, say it, that it's a, it's a stretch. But, it's, it but is yeah, a stretch, I mean, this one's but pretty fun. It, it's pretty fun. I, I do think that they have they they look very good together on screen. Yeah. And there's a part like, oh god, they're gonna pick that song. They'll be together six months, <laughs> and it's so funny because you know they say things that we all say. When we go he to weddings only and stuff. eats the the brown M and M's. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and one, I, it's cute. It's cute enough. I like it. I yeah. will say something about this too because this was the era of Matthew McConaughey doing a lot of rom coms, and he wasn't getting much work besides of that. And yes. I, I'll give it to Matthew McConaughey that he put an effort into everything that he did, rom com or not. And he's, you know, he still stayed in the public conscience. And people mm-hmm. knew who he was because he did these rom coms, whether they were good or bad or whatever. Yeah. I don't and know. So I'll if give I it to him. But like failure well, to launch is painful. No, he th- is just walking through that. I I think like that is true. That that's like that's his. I think that's his that's last the low one that he point. did. That was the low point. But I will say, like for this yeah. movie and a couple of others, like he he put that effort in. I think he was done. Yeah. You know, by the time failure to launch came in, and then of course he he got like his career was rejuvenated after that yeah but i i will say that like for him he's putting in the effort and, and he's sexy and he's sly and it's, you know he's he's you know matthew you know mckay yeah you know? i i you don't know. know how believable he is as your hunky doctor but i 
No, but, but yeah, like, no, we've he's... got to forgive certain, <laughs> yeah, for sure. uh, certain aspects of these movies. We've got to forgive. He's, you know? he's very, very charming in this, and they have good chemistry, yeah. and it, it, it's it's cute. It's a cute movie. It's cute, yeah. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. My number 11 is another one I think is a little underappreciated, and that's She's the Man Oh, mm-hmm. is my number 11. I think that Amanda Bynes was a really talented physical comedian. Yeah. Uh, she, I love Big Fat Liar. It's one of my like favorite movie, like favorite comedies. I love that movie. And it's so funny. And I, I, she brings a lot of that comedy here to this role. And of course, this is a take on Twelfth Night, which is yeah. my favorite Shakespeare. And, uh, and you've got, you know, a lot of jokes about gender and gender uh, roles. And uh, for the most part, I think they're still pretty funny. And, you know, the, the idea that that you know, we'd have this mistaken identity and everything it's like whatever you kind of have to just go with it and but Channy tatum's really fun in it and i don't know so i like god he was in that movie yeah, yeah. i think okay. amanda bynes had a great one of the better transitioning from childhood actors into like young adults yeah. she had some really solid roles you know yeah in that aspect for that but I rewatched this for Family Movie Night uh, a couple of years ago, and I, I thought it really held up well. I was laughing, yeah. and she I had laughed. a good run there in some of her films early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what do you have at ten? Oh, at ten, I struggled with this one, but I ended up putting it on the list, and it's from uh, it's my least favorite Nancy Mayer, uh, Myers movie. It's Something's Got to Give, mm-hmm. and I just think it's too long of a movie, and it doesn't know how to end or where to end it. But the, it's Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton, uh, Keanu Reeves. I'm surprised Reeves. you put it on your list. I guess that's where, where... Yeah, no, because there are so much aspects of this movie that I do like. I just think it's too long and it doesn't know when to stop. Mm. That's my main complaint of it. But like Jack Nicholson is just like a dirty old man, essentially, dating <clears> Amanda <throat> Pete, who's Diane Keaton's daughter. And he has a heart attack. And of course, Diane Keaton has to take care of him. And, uh, you know, a, a love blossoms between them, but in walks Keanu Reeves, who's his doctor, and mm-hmm. he likes Diane Keaton, so there's a... Diane Keaton's got to run off with Keanu Reeves and, yeah. and all this other stuff, and I was like, okay, movie, it's time to end it. Nope, it keeps going for another half hour. Um, <laughs> but there is something between Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton. I mean, they're very... It's a great cast. There's yeah. a lot of, like, funny moments in it. I actually haven't seen this one. This is a, a blind yeah. spot and of mine. I, they, it came out really, when I was on my yeah. mission. I just never have caught oh. up with it. It is, it is funny because they do like, oh, look at this old disgusting guy like Jack Nicholson. He still thinks he's a ladies man in his age dating all these young girls. So they really do play into the fact that like, that's not cool. You know, of course, the reverse is with Keanu Reeves dating Diane Keaton. She's like, oh, he's so much younger than, than me. You know, but Keanu Reeves, who's forever ageless, by the way. Um, you know, just is so into Diane Keaton too. And so it's it's kind of like a love triangle in that aspect between the three of them, more so than with Amanda Peet, who once Jack Nicholson has a has a heart attack, she's like, This is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Francis McDormand is in this movie too. Um, Diane Keaton's friend in it. So there's a yeah. lot of aspects to love, a lot of great Nancy Myers, like 
things that she does. It's just too long. Yeah. Too long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, my number 10, maybe I'm just going to say this for every single one. I think this is a little underrated. It's win a date with Tad Hamilton. And this is where we get my, my love and devotion for Topher Grace. I love him so much. I wish he would do more (laughs) rom-coms. He's a little bit unlikable in this, I admit it, but I just love him so much that like his character is a little bit unlikable, but I love him so much that I don't care. Um, that it, he plays this he plays this uh grocery store manager or whatever and one of his co-workers is kate bosworth and she enters this competition to win a date with this movie star named tad hamilton played by josh duhamel yeah. and she wins and so he has to see her getting asked out by and going on dates with this movie star and so i don't know it's just to me, it's it's sort of friends to lovers, which is an easy win for me. And right. yeah. uh, they do have, I think, pretty good chemistry. And Josh Duhamel is like very likable as this movie star. So that is Ted. peak, I think. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is right after Josh he, Duhamel. <laughs> yeah, it's right after he left. Like all my children, because he's a big soap star. Yeah, won an Emmy for that, and then you know he did Las Vegas and this. So this was at his height. You know. Yeah, I love Topher Grace so much. I guess at the height of Topher Grace too, because he had that '70s show yeah, this... on at the same time. So this is really, and I, I love so. '70s yeah. show, and yeah. I don't, I just love him so much, and I yeah. So if you haven't seen it, this it's a cute little rom com, I think. So what do you have at nine? I have twenty seven dresses mm-hmm. with Catherine Heigl and James Marsden. Can I? Yeah, Marley Ackerman as well. <clears throat> First of all, yeah, James Mars like, actually gets the girl. Oh my gosh, I'm so once. happy! <laughs> he never you know, the girl. I know, famously loses the girl in the Notebook, um, in the Notebook, and in X Men, and a whole bunch of. Oh yeah, because she does. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of movies. Uh, but man, the sister is terrible in this movie. She is so terrible. Um, she's getting married to the man that Catherine Heigl loves and oh, that scene where she cuts up her mother's wedding dress. I was like, beat her, beat her senseless. And she doesn't <laughs> beat her. So she gets yell, she yells at her, but because she's the bridesmaid and also James uh, Marston plays a reporter and Catherine Heigl has the unfortunate of being a bridesmaid 27 times. Hence the 27 dresses. There's a whole article written about that. And it, you know, it's going to go one way. But of course, they fall in love and she has to get her stuff with her sister off her chest, too. And I don't know. I think yeah, Catherine Heigl gets like a really bad rap, you know, but I think she's very charming in this movie. And I do think that they looked good together. And they had the chemistry and just wanted I just wanted her to beat that sister. Like, what is it with these rom-coms where these sisters are just terrible? They steal their men. <laughs> do all this yeah stuff. which she does have a pretty doesn't she say you're just the bee who who destroyed my mom's wedding dress oh she does she well yeah she wanted it's to wear her mom's dress and she literally shreds that to tatter <laughs> she doesn't even consider her sister might want to wear that one day herself like she's so inc- like her sister is very inconsiderate and spoiled yeah. oh and she tries to ruin the sister's wedding too <laughs> to put up the slides of her sister being just an awful person there's yeah. a lot of vindictiveness in it. Like, just the movie is about like she's no luck in love. She's been, this guy's writing an article about her always being a bridesmaid. But there is also these issues between the sisters that have to, you know, come to light and and get mended somehow. So there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. But I just remember this movie being fun. It, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. Well, yeah. my number nine. Is another one I think is underrated. Uh, it's a movie called Something New. Oh yeah, and this stars Sine Nathan. This stars Sine Lithan, who is so good. She's definitely underrated actress. She's so beautiful, and uh, she's great in the Best Man movies and in Love and Basketball and so many good films. And she's in this, and she plays this woman who uh, kind of sees her she's everything through the lens of her career 
Yeah. And uh, and she believes that there's this black tax that everything is like harder and there's reason that she believes this in her life and things have been that things promotions and other things have been harder for her to get than other people in her in her firm and uh, and so she she just looks at everything through the lens of race and yeah. then all of a sudden she has this hunky doctor i mean hunky Ooh. doctor she has yeah. this hunky gardener <laughs> uh played by simon baker who uh is fixing up her backyard and they just have this amazing chemistry totally. and uh and she she just doesn't know what to do about this it's like she cannot believe that she's somebody who could have a relationship with a with a white man it's just really hard for her and so the movie has a lot of themes uh it tries to tackle a lot and i can't really speak to how people feel it handles them as far as that community but i feel like it i feel like it does a really good job and uh there there's a point where her dad is saying to her like he's not he's not an alien like he's not from another that's a great part yeah yeah their conversation and i don't know i just feel like it's it's it tries to have some conversations that are important this is definitely one i i would like the mahogany cast to take a look at and see what they think uh because i'd be very curious uh for their thoughts she also is dating blair underwood uh, mm-hmm. who's kind of the guy that she thought that she uh, was going to end up with. Two hunky very men successful, after her. Very handsome, but they just don't have that spark that she has with this with this gardener guy. And, and it's uh, a gardener too. Like, yeah, <laughs> gardener. He's not. And he's so into her. Yeah. Oh. And uh, he like, he loves her even without her uh, weave in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and and then that's I don't know I just I just love it I think it's really good and it's got a great cast with it's got Traj P Henson Donald Faison Alfre Woodard uh, and Sanaa Sanaa Lathan is the lead and she's just so good and so, so good beautiful and and uh, so I, I if mean, you haven't seen it give it a shot I think you might like the it. men that are vying for her attention so hot she's so lucky yeah um, <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> I thought about putting this movie on my list, but I don't know why I think of this movie more as just a plain romance film and not yeah. really a rom-com. That's just me who thinks that. I can it's see been that. a bit since I've seen the movie, but my, you know, my feeling about it's more like a romance, but like, this is a great movie. I think you should yeah. watch it. He's so into her. He's so patient, Simon Baker. I think oh. this is the hottest he's, he, he is, you know, uh, <laughs> that he was at this moment. And, um, yeah, this is a great pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's not laugh out loud funny, so I can see that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you have at eight? Uh, I ended up going with two weeks notice with mm-hmm. Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant. And Alicia Witt is in this movie as well. Basically, oh, Sandra yeah. Bo- uh, Bullock is a, is a lawyer. She goes to work for Hugh Grant, who's a rich guy. A very demanding boss. She ends up working with him and um, I mean, he's like, she, he treats her like more than a personal assistant. It's like, you got to help me with this. And she's got to run out of her sister's wedding thinking it's so important. I mean, is it this important lawyer stuff or this pro bono stuff or whatever? And no, it's something silly, like help choose my, my tie. And eventually she gets so fed up. She's giving him two weeks notice. She's quitting. She's moving on to a better job. And of course, he finds he figures out, hey, I love her, and so they end up falling in love, you know. And he's got to like learn to be not as selfish and and so all consuming of his time. But the one thing I remember about this this movie too is the whole part where they're playing the tennis and she has to go to the bathroom real bad, and they just keep running around and they can't find a bathroom. And I was like, they never do these type of jokes where. You know, you don't really ever well, see on TV shows or whatever people who have to go to the bathroom. And then well, and doesn't just, she go into an RV? An RV. She has yeah. to use the RV camper. And he's like, ma'am, can she use that? She's really got to go. Because at this point, he's trying to show that he's being more considerate and caring by trying to help her find a bathroom. Yeah. And at that part, I was like, this is the most horrifying part. But if you can overcome that in a relationship, it's all good, I guess. 
Yeah. Yeah, that one's a fun one. I like well, that. Well, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of Sandra Bullock. I, I enjoy a lot of uh, some of her movies. And I do think out of the rom-coms she's done, this is the one that I like the most. More than while you were sleeping? Well, of this of the 2000s. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, like, the one she did in 2000s. Because I'll, I'll, take, I'll take this one over the one that she does with. I know people prefer that one better with Ryan Reynolds, but... Oh, no, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So my number eight is uh, maybe one people don't think of as a rom-com. Maybe it's a stretch. I But I have Hairspray and number oh, eight. Oh, yeah. Uh, it not only has your main romance between Link and Tracy, but you've got the uh, the secondary romances and you've got her parents. And they're, t- they're timeless to me. It's hilarious. And uh, you've got... um. Her friend, I can't think of her name all of a sudden, but um, uh, and uh, and that romance, and I, I just, I love this show so much. I love the songs so much. I love the the whole and pretty much the whole cast. I know John Travolta is like looks bizarre and it's <laughs> it's very strange, but whatever. Crazy. Um, I huh. just, it's so the songs are so catchy. Yeah. It's so sweet. It's got such a nice message. It, uh, Queen Latifah, I love in it. Uh, I just, Self-fifer. I love this movie. Yeah. She's so mean in it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Like, the Hairspray is great, you know. There's so many Broadway musicals that are based on movies and probably partly because of Hairspray. <laughs> I mean, it was something well, that Hairspray always Hairspray does it right. But, yeah. But Hairspray was such a big hit and and uh and uh, it just deserves it has such catchy songs it's such yeah. a nice message it's just such a it's such a good show and i've liked any iteration of hairspray i like the old you know the john yeah. waters movie i like this i like hairspray live i i love going to see hairspray like- it's just a great show i thought the live version that they did was actually pretty well done as well oh yeah i agree. Yeah, i thought that was pretty good yeah uh so what do you have at seven? Well, I have seven. Now, I remember this movie as a rom-com, but uh, I picked Wimbledon, which is probably not a movie that people remember a lot. Yeah. It has Kristen Dunst and Paul Bettany. Sam Neill is in it. Uh, a yeah, lot of I've never seen it. it, but I heard it's um, pretty sexy. It is. Basically, Paul Bettany, he plays a tennis. He's a tennis pro. He's He's in his 30s. He's already at the end of his career. He's fallen down a lot in his ranking. And he's like, I got to think of the future. I'm going to retire. I'm going to do one more. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, one more, ga- you know, one more game at Wimbledon. I'm going to do, you know, then I'm going to retire and become a coach at this, you know, private tennis club. He doesn't, you know, teach rich people how to play. It's not something he wants to do, but at this point he can't get anything better. And he's just like, eh, you know, it's my life. And he happens to meet up with Kristen Dunst, who's an up and comer American tennis you know she's pro player also going to be playing at Wimbledon and they just like they have instant chemistry and they like hanging out with each other and he sort of starts playing better he gets a she brings a confidence back into his game where he just starts playing so much better and it's not that she's suffering at it but her father is very overprotective of her and he's like no no relationship he's ruining your game You know, you're up and comer. He's a has-been. So there's that pull. And, you know, and then he becomes like, which is like, I don't know. But at the time, it was kind of fiction. Like, because a British person had not won the Wimbledon. And so he gets so so high up. Like, will he win Wimbledon? He's become such an amazing player. He's still going to retire. But, like, he's going out on a high point. And it's just basically a, you know, who's keeping them apart? And do they feel like, you know, I suck playing now because I'm in love or I'm such a better player because I'm in love and, you know, gaining the confidence within themselves to compete. And uh, it's a it's a sports romance, you know, but um, I don't know. I like this movie. I like them together. Uh, I think that they're hot and there's some sexy moments in it. And I found it charming. That's and fun. I don't think a lot of people remember it. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah. So, so. I don't know if you would like it, but, you know, I was OK. <laughs> I found it charming. Uh, cool. Uh, my number seven is where I have one of the most successful rom-coms like ever. 
uh, and certainly of the era. I have Hitch at number seven. Oh, yeah. Will Smith is at his absolute most charming that he's ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kevin James is sweet. Uh, it's it's got a it's got a fun script. It's uh, your matchmaker who ends up getting matched. Um, I don't know what you couldn't like about this movie. Like, it's so likable and funny and mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's. I might it's be done. that one person then. What? I don't really. I don't care much for this movie. It never did anything for me. <laughs> Sorry. See, that's surprised. There me. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I also haven't seen it in a long time. I, maybe I would like it better on a rewatch. You know, some movies age better with a you know a person when you give it another mm-hmm. go around. But you know, eh. yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you have at six? Uh, this one is where I have fifty first dates. It's uh, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Yeah, teaming after the wedding singer. It's uh, basically Drew Barrymore is, is someone who suffers from uh, short term memory loss. She had a accident, so she doesn't remember anything post accident. All her memories are previous. So each day is a brand new day. You gotta like, what year is it? What this? And of course, Adam Sandler doesn't know this. He he works at the zoo. He's a zoologist. And he meets Drew Barrymore and they have this wonderful first date. And he's like, wow, this, this girl was amazing. I think I've met up with her, you know, because he's new. At, this is in Hawaii. He's new, he's new. He's new there. So he doesn't know. And the next day she's like, who are you? I don't know you. Get away from me. And he's like, what is going on? And then the people have to tell her, tell him like, no, nah, she had an accident. And, you know, and we just like. We, so they play it very safe with her. It's the same routine day by day. And Sean Astin plays her brother, and he is a complete goof in this movie. And um, and Adam Sandler's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to change this up. I have fallen in love. And he he's like, I'm going to make her fall in love with me every day if I have to for the rest of my life. And it's basically what it is. They go on all these first. It's a first date to her all the time, but it's not. It's like, this is our third date. This is our 50th date. And he keeps all this written down so she can read and remember all the dates and all the fun they had. And it's like a it's a new love story, you know, each day. Some dates don't work out well. Some dates do. And I just think Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore have such yeah. good chemistry together. It's funny. It's a good supporting cast. Dan Aykroyd plays Drew Barrymore's uh, yeah. father. Maya Rudolph has a small role in it. I don't know. It's just. I think it's very sweet and it's all of sweet. The, the sweet parts I think work really well. The yeah. humor I don't love in this movie. Yeah, like, some of the humor is like, you know, it's an Adam Sandler movie and sometimes his humor can be a little bit too much, but I don't know. I yeah. found this charming. This one I like. It's not as good as The Wedding Singer. But oh, no. um, Isn't it I, interesting I, that we've had completely different lists up till this uh, well, yeah, yeah. through this point. Isn't that interesting? Because yes. it's such, a, it's, it's such a, yeah. a rough time that you think we would have a lot of the same list no it's true i this this is an era i, I think from even the 2010s i bet we wouldn't have anything the same it's mm-hmm. like such a it's a tough time <laughs> but i don't know i just like but you think together. in a tough time we would have more of the same because there's less to choose from but this well, is it's true well so far we haven't had know, any matches i think uh, coming up we might have some of the yeah. same. i don't know hey this is jen johans host of the podcast watch with jen which delivers a steady stream of great movie recommendations, thoughtful career deep dives, and first-rate conversations with film critics, authors, actors, journalists, filmmakers, and more. You can find Watch with Jen wherever you get your podcasts or hear us first at our Patreon at patreon.com slash filmintuition. Um, well, my number six is a bit of a stretch for rom-com. It's more just like gen- general comedy, but it does have the rom-com aspects. So whatever. Um, my number six is Stranger Than Fiction. That's another okay. one I think yeah. is underrated in this era. I I really love this movie. If you think, oh, I don't like Will Ferrell. Well, you should give this one a shot. Like yeah. he, it, it's a different kind of performance. So you have that manic energy, but but it's such a great story about this uh this uh iris agent guy that all of a sudden starts hearing this voice narrating his life and uh, it's emma thompson's voice <laughs> and oh yeah uh, <laughs> so and he's like, they're he's telling the story more eloquently and in better <laughs> than my, than my life <laughs> and uh he, he starts to 
is that it, the the voice says that uh, little did he know that death that his imminent death was about to occur, and so then he, and he goes, "Say really, what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he starts to get really concerned, and he is auditing this uh, this woman who is this anarchist baker who refused to pay her taxes, and forgot about that. My my Maggie Gyllenhaal, and it's so sweet, and I absolutely love my one of my like favorite scenes is when he's they go on a date and he uh she's a she's a baker and so he gives her flowers but it's not flowers it's different kinds of flowers so there's like almond flower yeah and there are here's all my flowers <laughs> they're so, it's so cute sweet. and yeah. uh <laughs> um and he just starts to live uh and because he he starts thinking about his story and he goes to dustin hoffman uh who's a literature professor and they try to break down like what makes a good story and why is, is his life a good story? And it's one of those movies that has like an interesting sort of thought bubble around it of like, yeah, if your life was a novel, would you want to read it? You know, are you telling a good story? And, and that's kind of the idea here. And uh, Queen Latifah has a small role in this. I just, I really love it. I think it's very underappreciated and it is romantic and yeah, people should see it. Yeah, it's Q2. I had forgotten about this one. Yeah. Um. So what is your number five? I have Enchanted. Same. Okay, we finally is, got one. Yeah, finally. <laughs> well, I just think that I think it, even, I think that because we have such different tastes, we might not align all the time. But... <laughs> and another one where James Marsden doesn't get the girl, the uh, main girl. Well, yeah, the main girl, but. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a modern day fairy tale that's making fun of fairy tales. Yeah. And like Amy Adams comes out from the cartoon world and she's like, you know, and <laughs> she meets up with Patrick Dempsey and she talks to the animals to trash his apartment. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was animals to help you the, clean, the, the, uh, not yeah, in the real the world. Cleaning. <laughs> uh, you know, I find and the great Alan Menken songs. Oh, oh totally. Song. <laughs> and um, along. Oh, Timothy Spall as the. One of the bad henchmen. Oh yeah, um, I love this movie. Yeah, the costumes so are great. The musical numbers are great. I think there's really good chemistry. Mm-hmm. They waited too long. Yeah, 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 they waited with a uh, with the little girl and yeah. and uh, helping her and 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 there's a Jody Benson cameo in the movie. Yeah, there's there's also um, in there and there's Judy a Kuhn. lot. Yeah, and uh, the oh, who was the lady who did the voice for Beauty and the Beast. For Beauty yeah, Paige Bell. O'Hara. Yeah. yeah, that's it. There's a lot like just like before you know it, you're like, oh, that's a Disney princess, like the voice, yeah. and so there's a lot of that. Yeah. It's very cute, and you know. The whole "How do you know" sequence, I love that. How do yeah. you know he loves you? Oh, it's so good. She breaks that into song. And he's like, what, are you, <laughs> you what are you doing? What are you it's doing? It's true. James <laughs> James Marsden is perfect in this. Oh, role. so funny. The prince yeah. who comes out, he's so clueless, and he's yeah. like, "I will get you," and he's just having the time of his life. And it's- and, you know, it's, it's really interesting because I always was like, why didn't they have Idina Menzel sing? And I still think it's nuts that they didn't at least have her do the, the final it song. It is weird the, the, that she uh, is not. Over the credits. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. But, I, you know, watching the sequel where they do give her something to sing, I it made, I was like, okay, now it makes sense because because Amy Adams is a lovely singer and she does such a good job in the role. But that is powerful. she's more of a sweet singer more of a yeah. simple singer whereas like idina is you know also legend. at that time and so i think it would have overshadowed her a little bit yeah so also I, at that time end, she's, it was a good call yeah she's mostly like the broadway lady at this time yeah. when enchanted came out you know she had yeah. really hit it into the mainstream like frozen you know that's a couple right. of years yeah. later yeah so, so but yeah but it was very charming. I mean, very it was, fun this movie. was just a couple years after uh, Wicked debuted. Yeah. Uh, so, like, so, so, people so at the time, was, it was like, quite, I cannot yeah. believe you didn't have her sing. But yes. now, in retrospect, I'm like, okay, I kind of get it because you don't want her to overshadow Giselle. Yeah. Totally. Amy Adams. It's a great movie. I absolutely love it. Great. It uh, took me years to watch it, too. Yeah. I really watched it like like 10 years ago. Oh, for really? The first time. Yeah. I crazy. I always adored it. <laughs> So what do you have at four? 
I have Kate and Leopold. Yeah, I love that one too. Uh, another movie that I think people have forgotten, but I, I just really love. I love like Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman, and it's a time travel movie, and Hugh Jackman <laughs> travels back to travels to the present with Meg Ryan, and it's all Leif Schreier's fault because he's Leif Schreier traveled back to the past, and he goes chasing <laughs> after him, and he gets stuck into the present, and. He ends up, help, you know, helping Meg Ryan out with yeah. her ad campaign, and it's like a man out of time sort of. The only romance. reason this didn't make my top twelve is because I don't think that they have that good of chemistry, right? But uh, I do really enjoy it, and my favorite scene in the whole movie is when he makes her that toast with the oh, strawberries. Yes. And she's like, this is the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. And then she, like, I really relate to that because when, when you're single and you're, you know, a working woman, like nobody ever does things or not never, but, but you don't have people like do things like that for you, you know, like every day sort of helping out gestures, you know, somebody, so somebody making you like a carefully made piece of toast is like, right. It's like oh. wonderful. Yeah. And he's got so, manners and stuff. And nice. Yeah. I, would, I love that scene. She's like, this is so good. Yeah. I think if anybody could get, I know this is on Blu-ray, but I don't know if it's available on Blu-ray, but on the DVD, because I have this DVD, they have the director's cut on it as well. I think it's a flip disc that I have, mm. if I'm not mistaken. The DVD, I mean, the, the director's uh, cut is different. Oh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of new stuff uh, added in there's more stuff to the tra- the time travel there's more of how everyone is related like how Liev Schreider is related to the past okay. and it connects into the future so there's the more like uh, right but there's more of a connection which is kind of weird which I, I get why they removed it in the um... well okay so I'll spoil it for you so you know mm-hmm. Liev Schreider and Meg Ryan were a couple and they're no longer a couple uh, but they still speak to each other because they still live in the same apartment building. And then he's like, because he breaks his leg. That's why she's got to take care of, you know, he goes, this is my ancestor. But it turns out that Meg Ryan is his ancestor, too. He just doesn't know it. And it's and there's a whole thing where Breck and May- Meyer figures this out. And he's like, whoa, dude, awkward, you know, like uh, in the movie, you know, but. Not that it matters because she has to go back in the past, but there's more stuff set in the past too. So I actually like the director's cut. That's cool. You know, but I so both versions are good. So if you like a good time travel romance, you know, and and Meg Ryan, this was at the kind of tail end of her like uh rom com heyday, but I yeah. still think she's very good in this yeah. movie. I agree. Uh all right. My number four is a, technically a remake, is Fever Pitch. And I like the original. The original is a British film, and they're both based on the um, um, they're both based on the same novel, a Nick Hornby novel, and I love his novels. And I just love this movie. Um, basically, Drew Barrymore is this sort of uptight uh woman, a business professional, and uh, she meets uh Jimmy Fallon's character, and he is like obsessed with the boston red Sox, and they but the thing that's like i think that makes it work so well is that they both have their obsessions and so in a certain way they they understand each other so much because she's obsessed with work he's obsessed with the red Sox. he's obsessed with it because that's where he used to go with his uncle and it was sort of his uh safe place his comfort place and uh, and so the movie's really almost more about obsession than it is about uh, about love, but they have really wonderful chemistry, and I th- I love the script, and I think that they're really good together. It has a really nice supporting cast, um, in including Marissa Jarrett Winokur, who was the original Tracy on on uh, Broadway and Hairspray. Um, she's good in it, and. I just, I again, another one I think is underrated for the era, and uh, it actually has something to say. Uh, and um, that you know, there's certain obsessions that we have deemed as being worthwhile, so we shouldn't be like concerned about them, you know. But then other stuff is like, 
there's certain like socially acceptable obsessions and then other things that aren't. And, uh, and the, the journey the two characters take, it's, it's just really good. I, I like it. I've actually never seen this movie or yeah. the original. I'll be honest. This yeah. is one I haven't seen. I should get yeah. to it eventually. I always <laughs> forget. I like it. Yeah. Um, all right. What do you have at three? Well, I wasn't going to put this on my list, Rachel, but you said it counted. So I put Elf on my list. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, this is like a new modern classic. Good Christmas, like a modern Christmas classic now. You know, it's Will I mean, Ferrell. I don't know if we, if you're going to count Enchanted, I don't know how you don't count Elf. They're basically exactly, the like, same movie. Right. And you were like, oh, Rachel, like you, you okay, I'm putting it on my list because I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, does Elf count? And you were like, yeah. And I was like, it's going. Um, <laughs> you know, so. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's, I just love Will Ferrell in this. Like, he's a human who grew up in the North Pole. <laughs> All the psychics he has with yeah. the elves and. He travels to the real world to find, you know, his biological dad, who's James Can- uh, Khan, and he's it's perfectly so cast. Mean this, in movie this movie is this movie is perfectly cast. Perfect. Everybody perfectly is cast. so good, you know. And of course, the rom com is he falls in love with show Zoe Deschanel, who we worked yeah. with at the harvest. You are a you sit on the throne of lies with a <laughs> fake Santa. <laughs> And he's such I love an when he goes into the world's greatest coffee. You did it. <laughs> you did, yes, he's so optimistic and so like. <laughs> and of yeah. course, his, James Scott thinks he's he's not well that he's slow. <laughs> Bloody the elf, you know. Yeah, I love all the psychics too. Like the the Bob Newhart is his adopted father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And, you know, it's just so the way he eats spaghetti is disgusting. And he bonds with his brother with the snowball fight. And he's like a <laughs> giant kid. Oh yeah. my gosh. When he goes, oh, an elf, you know, with mm-hmm. people, the whole, I can't believe they, I don't know if people would do this today, but when the because his father, you know, is a publisher of children's books. And you have Peter Dinklage coming in. Yeah, famous hilarious. Children's book. This giving the wildest, most inappropriate <laughs> ideas for a children's book. And he, he come, buddy comes in. I like, love oh, the guy. That, I love the guy that's uh, that's always just putting out different kinds of vegetables. It can yes. be about tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like in the way. And then, you know, when Peter Dinklage beats him up. It's about it's asparagus. Like, an asparagus thing. <laughs> And I just love Peter Davis, who like who beats him up, you know, because he's like you're a mean elf, you know. <laughs> and there's a gag too with the Kegler elves when <laughs> you remember the Kegler yeah. elves, like the giant when their tree catches on fire. <laughs> it's really good. It's really it's good. good. It's great. It's uh, a great. All right, my number three is where I have Juno. Yeah, and uh, I love Juno. I love the script. I know it's very like. It's a very, uh, like, it has a very distinct style, the script. Like, it's not a realistic script. People don't talk like that. And I understand that that's sort of grating for some people. But I really like it. And I just think it's so funny. And I love their relationship. And I love uh, Jennifer Garner's character. I think the, the, the journey that the script takes you on from thinking, Oh, she's just such a stick in the mud to, to really loving her character. I love JK Simmons and Allison Janney. Oh, as her he's so, I just love how straight he plays it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought, I didn't think you were that kind of a girl. I don't know what kind of girl I am. And I, it's just such a good script and it's such a good, I, I just, I love it. And uh, I love her friend, her best friend. She's really <laughs> yeah. funny. And, um, so it's oh, it's a fa- it's a favorite of mine. I will uh, say so. which the part which made me laugh is when she when she's first thinking about it and she goes to the abortion clinic and yeah. she meets a fellow her fellow friend. And has, yeah, like and she's going there and protesting is a, a classmate and a fellow friend of her. Like, hey, how you doing? Eh, just protesting. How are you? Oh, you're not. <laughs> oh well, you know, save your baby. The Lord wants to say like just kind of, kind of conversation like yeah, I'll see you later in school. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hope you change your mind. You know, like, yeah. like there's no real animosity between them, but like you know they just say hello to each other. That part made me laugh. Yeah, I yeah. You know. <laughs> I love like when she's <laughs> and you're like the coolest person I know, and you don't have to try at all. And he's like, I try really hard actually. <laughs> yeah. 
and so uh, I love when like the father goes well, I know my daughter come on she talked him into it like for the boy like <laughs> <laughs> you know I kind of like it because she had she had like reasonable parents I think yeah in that situation because I've never understood the real life or how they would change from how, how a parent would be like you're out of here you know yeah. I don't want anything to do with it it's so bizarre Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you really thing... see the character grow by oh like, totally by the just... end. Like she's been changed from this experience. Oh totally, and I I think all the stuff with Jennifer Garner works. Like oh, when she gets to touch yeah. her stomach, like yeah. at the mall, like when she gets to put her hand on there, and it's so touching. I just hate everything involving Jason Bateman. <sighs> like what a terrible guy he was. Yeah. He ended up being, and of course. She idolizes him because she thinks he's so cool and yeah. he's all with it. And then he's not, he's, he's not, he doesn't want any of this, but yeah. I mean, that's she, kind of the journey yeah. of the character is that totally. again, like you think that the, her judgment about, and our, our judgment as the audience yeah. for both of those characters, Jennifer Garner and Jason Bateman, I, I think is, is just very well crafted. It's well yeah. done. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you're kind of supposed to hate him. Like, yeah totally totally yeah. also positive story about adoption you know yeah. and so. i you know like who decided that yellow was a gender neutral color <laughs> what do you think yeah. uh, no, there are some, there just, are some, there's just, some good just, moments in this yeah, one too totally. i love it we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. All right. What do you have at two? I have returned to me. Yeah, same. Um, I mean, I think some people would be like, this is a rom-com, but it is. It, it, it um. It's directed and co-written by Bonnie um, Bonnie Hunt, and she mm -hmm. she plays Minnie Driver's best friend. Yeah, and Minnie Driver, you know. Oh, and, and like uh, Carol O'Connor and Ro and Robert Loja are in this too. I like love one them of their last... so much. The old yeah, people. Yeah, this is De like the last film for Carol O'Connor. Debating mm -hmm. between yeah. Irish and and, and, Italian. and Italian singers. <laughs> yeah, and my and like, my fantasy ever since this movie is to go to an Irish Italian pub. Yeah, totally. Like they have in the movie, and yeah. you see, so you can get ravioli with a side of sauerkraut. <laughs> I know. And like, so Carol O'Connor plays Minnie Driver's gr grandfather and she needs a heart transplant. She's real yeah. sick. And David Duchovny is an architect and he's building up this zoo, you know, expanding it, which his wife, um, who's played by Jolie Richardson, mm -hmm. uh, works at. And she works with the the the, the apes, uh, the gorillas and, and all that stuff. And he's building a new uh, enclosure for them. And she dies tragically in a car accident. And yeah. he decides to donate her heart. And that is who Minnie Driver gets the, the heart from. They apparently meet quite by accident, like a year later, like uh, his, uh, David Duchovny's best friend is at, played by David Allen Grant in this movie. And he sets them up on an awful blind date with an awful woman. And they meet at the restaurant and they just start to date. And before, you know, and she's like, I want to write this thank you letter to the donor. And, you know, she's so grateful mm. for, you know, another lease on life. And then it comes, she finds out that it's him, that it was his wife. And it's like, yeah. oh my gosh. Oh. You know? So yeah, this one does bring on the tears. So it, yeah, it's like, it's is it so a comedy, good. is it a drama? But I think there's enough laughs. There is and, enough uh, laughs, They have incredible you know? chemistry and it's so heartfelt. And I love the supporting cast. Bonnie Hunt and Jim <laughs> are so uh, Yeah, good. always with all these babies. Like, I, she's I almost wish that, with... and even in the end, you see she's pregnant again. Yes, it's, it's so great. Yeah. I almost wish that we got a whole separate movie just about that. It's so funny. We're like, oh, these kids or whatever. And, it, you know, yeah. Oh, when they try to, 
try to hook him up with who oh, he, he he's no longer a priest yeah, give him a chance like you know Jim Bowie's just like give him a chance he's no longer yeah he, he goes why'd you wear that collar oh, I'm getting used to it like when they try to set her up on dates and stuff <laughs> yeah there's a yeah. lot of funny and moments David Allen Greer is really fun he's really good in this it, movie as his too. friend and yeah He's really like it's funny. the old the old people are absolutely hilarious. oh but they spy on them in the back I like oh them. he's giving this like they're looking out the window like oh yeah. that, you know and an absolutely great soundtrack uh, absolutely so good. wonderful <laughs> you know and it's it's, it's uh, you know this is a movie I don't think a lot of people know either no um it's so great still holds up yeah it's wonderful it's a perfect score for me five stars yeah. I love yeah. it same um. Well, it was a debate between my number one and number two because I do love Return to Me. But as far as like a pure romantic comedy, the best of this era, I got to go with my Big Fat Greek Wedding. I mean, it's yeah. so funny. It's so romantic. And it does so many things that I usually don't like and does it well. So I got to give a huge props to that. I usually don't like family shenanigan type movies they're usually too much for me they kind of stress me out but this one i i love and i usually don't like wedding movies but this one i love because the thing that i love the most about ian and tula is that they are committed to getting married no matter what like and it doesn't yeah. matter what kind of chaos is around them that's never it, yeah. it's never they're about so, the wedding yeah. and like they'll just they'll just look at like these crazy over-the-top invitations and they're like okay bye. okay yeah they are committed it, they are the, committed because it's this crazy dress and she's like okay fine like they're just so <laughs> chill it's all about their love and he'll yeah. get baptized for them like they'll just do whatever it takes which makes it so endearing and you just love totally. them as a couple and because you're just continually laughing, like whether it's the Windex <laughs> or the <laughs> the ant with her mole, I mean, oh, it's my twin. For the bunt cake, <laughs> bring a bunt, a bunt. They run a bunt. Um, they, uh, I'm a vegetarian. You have lamb. <laughs> I it's, love this movie so much. I know it's such a great movie. I actually don't have this on on the list on my uh -huh. list, mainly because we talked about it before for the indies. Uh -huh. And I was like, I want to try to put some things on that we haven't discussed before, but I, yeah, that's fair. I agree with you. This is a great movie. And he's, he's so committed that he's like, I don't care. I'll get baptized in the, the faith so we can get married at a, you know, in a church. He goes, I don't really care as long as we get married. Yeah. And you're right. They are so committed. You know, there's nothing really, it's just crazy shenanigans from the family. Like they're committed to getting married no matter what. And that's the thing, whether you like the two extra movies, you know, the, the now trilogy, um, mm -hmm. that's the one constant thing that they are a committed couple. Yeah. There is nothing there that's going to break their love. They work through their problems. They're, yeah. they're committed. And that's nice to see in romance movies. Cause usually we always get people breaking up and there's a, uh, a dilemma that splits them. We don't really get to see too many happily married or too many couples just happy being together. Yeah. You know, so that's very so, refreshing. So what do you have at one? Well, because you said this counted as well, Rachel, Mamma Mia. Um mm -hmm. which yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of love stories How could going it not on. Count? Here. Why wouldn't huh? it count? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm putting it up there. I love my <laughs> Mamma Mia. I even love Pierce Brosnan singing in this movie, and I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> um, yeah, but you have like Meryl Streep and Pierce Brosnan, you know, uh, getting, you know, falling back in love, and you have um, Amanda Seyfried who's uh, getting in, in, in married to Dominic Cooper. She don't know who her dad is, so she invites Pierce Brosnan, Stellan Skarsgård, and and Colin uh, Colin Firth, and and mm -hmm. uh, you know. And I love just, Christine Baranski in that. Oh, she's so great. And it's, it's just mother, like a musical. No. <laughs> First of all, it's a musical based on some great ABBA songs. So mm -hmm. enjoy ABBA. It's great. Yes. They're on that Greek island, which is breathtaking. <laughs> and it's just such a wonderfully happy movie. Yeah. I love the Lay Your Love uh Lay Your Love on Me number. Oh yeah, that's so good. great. Mm -hmm. Give me, give me more. Like, I mean, there's, I mean, give me, give me, give me a so much fun because I love ABBA. Yeah. I, just, I love their music. It's just so joyous to me and to see it. And you're like, 
Meryl, I, I know it's tough, Meryl, but I would like to live on that Greek island there for that hotel. It just looked so beautiful. It's a beautiful looking movie. It, it's it Not is. on location. That's why it looks great. And it's Yeah. got a great cast. And they're so good. And And it's I have so much fun. I have long said that Mamma Mia is the ideal airplane movie to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gives Because you no stress. no stress, no sad parts, nothing tense, and nothing like inappropriate that that because I at least I feel like it's rude to watch something like really mature, like especially if you have like kids around you. But I don't know. I just feel like it's rude that other people can see your screen and they may not want you know, to have those same choices as you. And, and, uh, and so you want something, cause I, that's why I would pick it, even though I think the second one is probably a little bit better of a film. I would still say that the first one is the best as far as an airplane movie, because the second Mm -hmm. one's a little more mature, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's the ideal, ideal. It's cheerful. It's fun. It's got the travel aspect to it. Right. Totally. I'm telling She's you, got take my that feet one to eggs, the bank, you know? watch Mamma Mia on the plane. <laughs> it is a good point now that you're thinking about it. You know, and this is a tangent. You can cut this out, Rachel, but I have an awesome like plane movie story. Just to okay, do you remember the uh, uh the uh Jennifer Love Hewitt movie Heartbreakers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I never saw it, With but I yeah, I know with it. the Sigourney Weaver, they play um they play like con women or whatever. <clears throat> Uh huh. There's this Family Guy skit. I saw this on a plane, okay, and it was one of the plane movies. Totally fine to watch in a plane. And because the plane was delayed, they gave us the headphones. They gave everybody headphones for free. Because I normally don't, I won't pay for headphones. I'm like, Yeah, I have a book. they I'll be started fine. giving them for free more. Yeah. But, you know, Yeah. I was like, I ha I brought a book with me. I will be fine. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I was like, I'll take advantage of it. I'll watch it. But there's this Family Guy skit where Jennifer Love Hewitt is guesting, playing herself on the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And she sort of wants Peter. And there's this scene where the lowest character goes, and you know what? I lied. I don't like Heartbreakers. I watched that movie for the first and only time on a plane. And you know what? The headphones were free. And I stood there shook. I was like, wait a minute. That's how I watched Heartbreakers. That's the only reason I watched that movie. And I've Yeah, never seen it again since. that's And funny. that and that has always said, I guess that is my ideal play movie. That scenario, which lives immortalized in Family Guy in a joke, which literally happened to me. Maybe we'll have to do a top 10 movies to watch on the plane. <laughs> one I watched of these that days. one where they had to, what was that one? One time on a plane where they were going to the, they had to dig to the core of the earth. I can't remember that one. That was on a plane. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if this is appropriate because this plane, my mother was like, oh no, this plane is shaking too much. For this I was watching because I one of my guilty pleasures is watching ridiculous uh, air uh, plane uh, first class um, luxury YouTubers that review Yeah. the different because um, I'm never going to take a flight like that. <laughs> so I like to watch it. And the one lady, she's like Top Gun. The Top Gun movies are my airplane movies. And I was like, epic fail. Like, I can't think of a like, I would never want to watch Top Gun on a plane. Well, like flying like crazy people why on earth would you want to watch that on a plane especially terrible idea the first Top Gun because the dude dies in that. You know, a Top Gun terrible 2, I might get away with on a plane. You know, you get carried. That movie had no business being good, but like you get carried yeah away with that one. But the first Top great Gun, no, because great he film dies such a tragic death. <laughs> terrible terrible i'm like epic fail on the part of the Airplane uh, YouTuber, <laughs> totally. but uh, But I'm like she just doesn't know the mom me is the correct choice. it's absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah, offensive, nothing you yeah, know, outrageous. cheerful, You know, yeah. cheerful. <laughs> Well, if you're gonna but pay I for do those think headphones, go ahead. I do think it is kind of amazing that in such a weak era that we only had two in our top in our twelve It is that kind matched of amazing. up. I'm amazed, but not, not amazed, because I kind of feel like when we get to the 2010s, we might have different as well. I think it's because we might go, those lists are probably going to be crazy. And then they're like, you like that? Or you didn't like that? Um, I Yeah. just think because, like, you know, we got a, a little bit of a different style, but I, I just think, yeah, Yeah. I'm, a, I'm surprised, but not surprised. <laughs> just because there's so, there's like, this, there's a, 
um, everybody thought the rom-com was dead, but no, people continued making the rom-coms. They just weren't good. Yeah. You know, in a while. There were a lot of bad ones. Yeah, they continued. For all of these, uh, the 24 that we had on our, well, 22, because we had two matching. Um, There were so many bad ones. Yeah, there were so many bad ones, but there's always somebody who likes, you know, and we've yeah, talked like about somebody doing, who likes like, the wedding day. Yeah. Like, what is that? Well, okay. That was 12 on my list, Rachel. Like, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, like, if we ever do like a list of bad movies we like, like, nobody can tell me that King Arthur Legend of the Sword is bad. I will fight you. <laughs> There's just some movies that, you know, you like, excuse me. I'm just you teasing. Know? Yeah. I know. Um, so I we asked the patrons but, uh, what they picked. And if you want to be part of these ranking episodes, Check out our Patreon. It's so much fun. You can even request a ranking uh, with certain tiers. And so we have some some from them. We have Becky Schopner. She says, Sweet Home Alabama, which is one that was a high, high uh, honorable mention. For me, I do think it's pretty funny. And I like the fact that that neither of the guys are like a bad option. They're both mm-hmm. like, they're both good guys. Um, so it's about which is the most right for her. So I do, yeah, like but I movie, feel like there's but... no surprise in that movie. I think for me, that's why I didn't have it on my list. I was like, Ugh, we knew right how it was going to end from the beginning. I think that's why mm. it takes a little bit for me. It's just me, though. Yeah. Um, there's some for the reason why for me is there are some super outdated parts of that movie. Oh yeah, well, that uh, yeah. that. <laughs> but uh, but I I do like it. But um, yeah. then we have something's got to give Juno. Mm-hmm. And those are her three favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Hahn says his favorites are Enchanted, Kissing Jessica Stein, which is pretty cute, uh, and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Neither of us oh. had that on our list. Oh, which yeah. Is kind That's of not bad either. It's another McKay Hay in that. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. I do I'm like it. Me. It's a little silly for my to make my top top list but uh i get it yeah. um so then liked a lot high school musical which i do also enjoy uh elf the proposal dislike love actually i didn't make either for our list no. uh what women want song. which is one of my most hated movies of all time <laughs> um and bewitched uh which i i think it's it's flawed but i i do enjoy it um and it says i thought shall we dance was okay but i really like the original japanese version a lot uh agreed i the the original japanese is is excellent the, the remake think of shall we dance is no a rom-com. good i haven't no thought about that one yeah um so then cynthia rice simmons uh says ultimate fave sweet home alabama second best the ugly truth can't agree with cynthia on that one I there's didn't. parts of that movie that i like though in the ugly truth i don't think it works as a whole but there are parts of it that i enjoy and then she has failure to launch so she's a fan uh the proposal uh and shrek which i shrek was a, a one i definitely considered on i debated mention. it as well yeah. yeah it's a good one uh a few of my likes uh something new wedding crashers which for the raunchy ones that one's pretty good uh the wedding planner and guess who and then don cox says his favorites are hitch serendipity and the seven year hitch which is one they aired on hallmark that's and right yeah so there we go uh that's our patrons so let us know yes. what you think we'll put the short list uh in the comments if you want to do your own video or your own post uh please tag us and we'd love to hear what your top 12 are from this era and uh and what you think of our picks and uh and terry where can people find you i am at twitter at flurry heaven and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast on Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, like we talked about, and the merch store. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.